everyone. Uh, we're live again here on Facebook and YouTube. I'm Randy here in the Eastwood Garage. I've got Cody with me. He's a product engineer here at How's Eastwood. Going, guys? And today we're going to be doing a little demonstration on brake tubing, flaring, and forming tools. And um, don't forget, you can comment, ask questions during this. We'll be, uh, we'll be able to uh, reply, answer your questions. And at the end of the episode, we're going to give away a free on-car flaring tool to whoever has the best comment or question. So keep the comments and questions coming uh, throughout this broadcast. And also let us know what, what kind of videos you want to see, what kind of demonstrations you want to see in these live videos. So that way we know um, uh, what questions um, you know what questions you have and we'll be able to answer them and interact with you. So Cody, let's go over some of the tools. Uh, let us know what, what we're going to do today. All right guys, so today we got our full line of brake tools here. We have our tubing straightener to get you from a coil of tubing to a nice straight line that you can work with. We have our tubing bender and forming pliers. These will let you bend and shape the line to get it to just the right shape you need. We have a tubing cutter to get you to the right length. We have our deburring tool so it'll prep the ends of the tubing so you can flare it. And we have our on-car flare that Brandy was talking about. This tool is great. It's designed to do a 3 16 double flare under a car. It's portable. It's inexpensive. Nice tool. And then we also have our pro flaring tool. One of our most popular tools here. Yeah. So actually on our, on our website, if you go and check this out, we have about 200 five-star reviews on this tool alone. So well, I guess we should get started, huh? Well, yeah. So, so what are we going to build? So what we're, we're going to make a little small brake line. It's going to have 3 16 double flares on both sides. Mm -hmm. And you might see this on the rear axle of a muscle car, you know, going from a T distribution block to a wheel cylinder if you had drum brakes. Mm -hmm. So to start, we're going to put two 90 degree bends in it. But hold on, I see your tubing straight. Yes, it is. How so do we get it that way? Well, we started with the coil tubing. We sell coils of both mild steel and stainless steel tubing here at the Eastwood Company. All the fittings. We got fittings, what you need, but then we also have our tubing straightener. So Randy, so, show me how this thing works. So you're storing a car, cheapest, best way to buy tubing is in bulk. You're gonna buy a big roll, it's gonna save you a lot of money. But this, it's, it's in a big coil and you can't really straighten it by hand. You're gonna end up with a bunch of kinks and it's gonna look bad. Which is why you need this tool right here. Let me show you how quick and easy it is to straighten a line of brake tubing. It's a long car. So there you go, in what, a few seconds, I'm hitting stuff that's hitting a welder behind us. In a few seconds, we have this entire roll perfectly straight, and then all you have to do is cut it like we did to length with our tool here and that's how we got to this point so so if you need to straighten them we have uh, these for each size tubing right now we're working with 316 since that's about the most popular size yep so we made some marks here just to reference where we wanted to start mm -hmm. our bend so I'm going to use the smallest die size in our tubing bender this does from 3 16 up to 3 8 The smallest die will actually do the 3 16 and the quarter inch without kinking either size. Now I see there's, there's marks here on the side. Uh, hey, Joe, can you get in and get see if you can get this to see? So what's nice about this tool is that it'll give you marks on the side to tell you what degree you're at. So that way you can do a repeatable bend. Say you want to do a 45 and then flip it over and do a 45 to kind of create an offset in the tubing. This will let you do that. So you just bend it until this mark lines up with a 45 or with the 90 or whichever you want exactly. to go, right? Exactly. You can do up to a 180 degree bend with this tool. All right. Let's check it out. So, so we got our tubing. And like I said, if you have any questions, be sure to post them. We have an, we have an iPad here, so we will be able to uh, tubing in. answer questions as we go. So we're just going to do a little 45. That way, it'll get us some height off from, say, this was the rear differential, and you wanted to drop down and follow the axle tube. And then now, we need to bend up to get to our wheel cylinder. So we do that. Uh oh. Uh oh. It is a little tricky to remember which way to go. So you want to be cognizant about what plane you're in when you're doing your bends. And this is live, so who knows what. To what can happen. You need me to hold something there, big guy? Yeah, I got it. So now we're up to 
90 degree bend. One last bend. This will get us to what would be the wheel cylinder. Do you know what we could have done? Yeah, so as you can see, there is a little bit of offset. It's not terrible, but it's not perfect. But if you wanted it perfect, you can index it by when you're using this tool right here. You just drop a marker down in it, and then as you as you push it, push the metal through, it'll put a line on it, and in that way, you have a, that line will be along the top of the tubing, and then you can use that as a reference point. So you always keep that line up as you make all the bends, so that way you know they're all made on the same plane. Exactly. If that's what you're trying to do. Gives you a great reference point. So now that we got this basically where we'd want it, we'd get this under the car, make our flares. And for any fine tune adjustment, we sell these brake line forming pliers. And these will bend 3 16 and quarter inch tubing. So it'll cover all your, the majority yeah. of your brake line sizes. No, we just need to stay a couple inches if we're going to use it here. Yes, we do. So yeah. just to show you, if, say I wanted to tweak it a little bit one way, I can to do get this. Up you know? And this, this tool is great for making the last minute fine tune adjustments. Yeah. So if, if you're just tuning in, um, we're live on Facebook and YouTube. You guys can ask us questions. Um, we'll try to answer them. If you have any comments, you know, uh, let us know what you want to see on, on these live videos, what kind of demonstrations. And like I said, the best question or comment, we're going to give away one of these on-car flaring tools. It's a new product. It's already really popular. So uh, we already have a couple comments. Um, where to buy, there should be links uh, in the video. If not, if you just go to Eastwood, go into our brake tools, uh, all these are here. And also, you always want to check it out because our daily deal is 10% um, off and free shipping. So if you go to eastwood.com, just check out our daily deal. There will be a banner at the top. You can see what we've got going today. And if you just search for you know, brake flaring tools or, or forming tools, you'll be get uh, all these, the pliers, the benders, the, the tubing straightener. Um, uh, guy, guy's just saying how much he loves our MiG-175. So we may have to do a welding demonstration you coming kick up. Butt. All right, so let's let's get started. I guess with yep. So I'll make a while it. Randy was answering those comments and questions, I was using our tube deburring tool. So what this does is it preps the ends of the tubing after you've cut it with the tubing cutter for flaring. Mm -hmm. Basically, it takes any burrs or cuts or nicks that you you made during the cutting operation and it preps it for the flare by making a nice chamfer on both the inside and outside edge. Because you don't want any any pieces of metal inside right. the tubing because when you make the flare, it's going to squash it down there. Yeah, it, it can do a lot of bad things to your flare. It can All ruin right. them. And you can also actually clean up the outside. I don't know if you said that. Yes, there. yeah, it'll chamfer the outside as well, which is important because the outside actually becomes the inside after a double flare. That's what will be on the inside mm -hmm. and then sit on okay. the chamfer on a wheel cylinder or brake caliper. So let's get started here with our flaring tool. Uh, it comes with these dies here for different size tubing. I'm Joe, if you can get in and see this. Um, so right here, we're going to be using the 3 16 It comes with quarter, 5 16 and 3 8 dies. If you can get in and see them right there. So um, like I said, we're going to be using the 3 16 And set everything up. It has a, there's this turret head that's on here. And it has operation zero, which you, as you can tell, it's operation zero is flat. And that's what's going to. Um, it sets the depth of the tube. It's going to set tube. the depth of the tubing yeah. for when we flare. And then you basically just pull the handle three times. You go to operation one for the tubing size, 3 16 pull the handle. Then you go to operation two for the tubing size, right there, pull the handle, and you have a perfect flare. So, you got all that, Joe? So, we'll put this back on. And you're always going to want to uh, lubricate. You want me to do this then, right? Yeah, that's fine. You're always going to want to lubricate. You can use brake fluid if you want. We have some little lube right here. So after you get it lubricated, you're going to put your dies in. We're going to make a double flare. So put the die in down here. And don't forget, the most important thing you want to do before you do a brake flare is make sure your tubing nut is on the <laughs> line. I forget. 
Good call. There you go. I forgot because this was real. All right. So then we, so you just put it in, put the top on. You just want to put this over, lock it in. Now the one thing you want is the tubing has to be sticking out past the end of these dies. So you turn it around to operation zero and make sure it's sticking out. Then you're going to want to pull the handle and that makes the tubing flush. When it's flush, you're going to tighten this, which I should have done a little bit before. And you really want to make sure want to, that's tight. Yeah, you want to make sure this is tight because you don't want the tubing moving when it's in there. I think it's there. So now we're going to go to operation one for 3 16 tubing. Just turn it around and you want to pull the handle and you want to make sure you pull the handle, make sure it goes all the way. And now we're going to go to operation two for 3 16 tubing. Again, pull the handle, make sure you go all the way and just simply take it out. There you go. Joe, you can see that? Got a nice flare. You see how simple and quick that was? One of the nice things about this tool is the lack of tool marks it leaves yeah. on the tubing. You know, some of our competitors, they have great flaring tools that work, but they but, leave the actual line in not the greatest condition. So now I'm going to get turn it over to Cody to use the on-car flare tool. Like I said, this comes, you know, you get Quarter inch, three sixteenth, five sixteenth, three eighth dies all come with this. So the on car flare tool only does three sixteenths. It does a double flare and it operates on the same principle. You have an operation zero that's going to set the depth of the tubing. Then you'll have an operation one which will begin the flare and an operation two which will complete the flare. So we're going to set, rather than having the uh, clamping jaws of that flare tool, you just have two screws that clamp the dies together. Tighten them with the 10 millimeter. So now that we're tight, you, there's a little hole in the tool and what that does is it lets you see to ensure that you're against your op zero, your stop block. So now that we can remove the block, One more time, make sure we're really tight. Okay. Now we're going to go to op one, which is marked right on the tool. So this is pretty easy too. Yeah. I mean, and you can use this on or off the car. Yeah. The handle does come off if you want to put this in a vise, just like the professional tool. Now the only difference is that this one will only do this one only does three sixteen. Exactly. But you can use it on a car which comes in handy, especially if you're a mechanic, where this one here, you know, you can do a few different sizes. I've been telling all my off-road buddies to buy this too, you know, because a brake line, you bust one of them on the trail, it's not on the, fun. Yeah. This, you can just carry a little piece of brake line and you can fix what you need to. So we can tighten this, just using a 17 millimeter ratcheting wrench. So now we're at operation one. Loosen. Flip it around to up two. Just flip it around. Yep. And just do the same thing again. It's that easy. And you got yourself a nice double flare. So again, if, if you're if you're just tuning in live on Facebook and YouTube, you will be able to watch this recorded on Facebook and YouTube. So um, if we don't get to your comment or your question. Today we will get to it uh, when this is over. And like I said, we're actually giving away one of these to the best question or comment. Um, at the end, uh, when this is all over, we'll review all the comments as they post, and and we'll post uh, you know the winner, and we'll make sure you get this tool. And like I said, again, let us know what you want to see. I know some people already said they want to see something on rust encapsulator. They want to see a video on lead working. It'd be great. We had, we have we had Gene Winfield in here, 89 years young, last summer. Uh, he did a video on, on lead working. He was doing some on a, on a fender. It's a, you, uh, you can find it on, uh, on YouTube. If you just go to, you know, just search Eastwood Leading, Eastwood Winfield, you'll find it. It's a really good yeah. video on using lead. Look at that. Yeah. Not bad. I mean, you're going to get the same results. But 
You don't Did forget, you forget to put the tube nut on. <laughs> You don't Man, end up with a break. That was my fault for not reminding you. You had, you had my back. I didn't have yours. So that's how you end up with your 45 degree double flare with the on car flare tool. So, um, well, I guess that's a maybe that's about it. If I, yeah. I, I'll check for questions. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. That way, when we go live, you'll be notified, and that's going to allow you to interact with us, ask us questions, post comments, tell us what you want to see, and we're going to try to do it. We're going to try to do a few of these a week. So I'm going to go check out some more. I'm going to go check out the questions, see if we have anything we can answer. I don't know, Cody, you want to tell them about your beautiful 67 Camaro here? All right, guys, so this is my 1967 Camaro project. We've been working on it here over the last few months. We're using all AMD sheet metal to get this thing back to a good condition. So far, we've done the cowl and the top dash. And then just recently in previous Facebook Live videos, we've been starting to work on the windshield A-pillar in the trim channel here. Yeah, we and actually we did, a, we did a live video yep. over there using our shrinker stretcher. If you've never, if you've never seen a shrinker stretcher and you're restoring a car, it is a tool you really do need to have. And that's it's amazing spot. what you can do, and it's simple to use. If you didn't have a shrinker stretcher, this would take you a long time. Yeah. But when you have one, it takes you five ten minutes. Yeah, just so cut the piece size, bend it. Form all you need, it. yeah, a little break. We got that Versa bend break, yeah. bent the piece, formed it. It's the only way you're going to make bends that go this way and this way, a compound bent. And like I said, it's really, yeah. it's a really simple tool to use. And it's amazing what you can do with it. Once I get some structure back in the car, I'm hoping to do the door skins shortly, and then cut the floor out. I got a full floor pan to replace this one. All from AMD All sheet from metal. AMD. And then we're gonna do some quarter panels, trunk floor. Door skins, door everything. Skin. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna look good. The whole front end sheet metal is gonna be all AMD. So, then, so we're going we're gonna to have videos showing you guys how to do all this, how to put a door skin on, how to do a quarter panel, how to do all the body work. So we do have a few questions uh, live because Matt Kelly said you didn't put the nut on. See? <laughs> <laughs> so he was, he he was, was on, on top it. of it. So um, one question here is, does it work just as well with stainless brake lines? On this one, yes, you can do stainless. You can do stainless with this as well. Yeah, I mean, it's this tool... And, and the professional tool are very similar. I mean, it's it's the same construction. Mm -hmm. It's just instead of a pressing instead operation, a handle. You're, using you're moving wrench. towards a threaded operation. Yeah. And what's the largest size you can do with this tool? Well, since I'm not quite sure which tool, we already went over these. This one here is just three sixteenths of uh, the straightener, but we do sell. I believe we sell them in sizes up to half inch. Yes. Yeah, so we also carry some metric sizes as well. This right now is up to three eighths. Yep. And th the on-color flare tool is specific to three sixteenths. The tubing bender will do three sixteenths to three eighths. Yeah. Three sixteenths and a quarter. Our tubing cutter. Also, I will, will it work with inch and an eighth? Will it work with any line? I'm, I'm guessing maybe. Do you mean transmission? You can use it for transmission cooler lines, fuel lines, you any kind of tubing like this. For the straightener, it, or the. Uh, will it work with any line? Oh, does it mean? Stainless. The straightener will work copper. with stainless. It'll work with copper. These actually were also invented for the HVAC industry. They're not just for automotive. So they're rated to yeah. for just about any tubing. You do. Somebody wants to know if they can. Uh, yeah, the, the, the stuff does will it work for fuel lines. Yeah, these tools yes. will work for fuel and lines. And we do carry quarter inch also, which I believe is a common fuel line size. Um, can you purchase all tools as a kit or individually? Pretty much everything here, I believe, is individually. Right. Right now, I believe it is individual. And uh, what else? Um, I just joined. Can I see the tool and the vise make a flare? Hey, we can do that again. Cody, yeah. you want to do it this time? I'll do it. All right. We just we have a couple of pieces of tubing cut here for just a demonstration. A little short piece. So you're going to want to set the tubing in the die block. After you put some lube on it. Yes. There's our lube. Set it in the two die blocks. Make sure these dies are against the back of the tool. There's a positive stop there. And then lock it in. Lower the clamp down slightly, but still enough that you can make allow sure it's the tube on operation slide. zero. It is on operation zero now. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull tightly against the die box. And that's just making that the tubing flush with the end of this. Exactly. So everything... it's, it's set in the length so that way you're not going to over or under flare. Yeah. Now we're going to crank down pretty good against those dies. Yeah, the key, you want it, you want it tight so it doesn't move. 
Now moving to op 1 3 16. So we have a nicely labeled top there so you know exactly which die you're going to use. You feel a nice positive stop when you know you're so done. That right there would actually be a, a bubble flare? It would be a bubble flare if we went to the 4.75 millimeter DIN. Okay. If we went to that op 1, you'd be done. But because we're doing a 45 degree double flare, we're going to go to op 2. So basically, to make a double flare, you just pull the handle three times. Yep. That easy. Op 1, op. Op 0, op 1, op 2. Now, now you pull another positive stop. Now you're complete. That's it. So someone else wants to know, what if, uh, what if you want to make a 37 degree flare? Well, we also have a turret another, head right here. blocks for 37 degree flares. Works the exact same way. So that way if you want to, what, if you want to use ANJIC fittings, yep. hydraulic lines, is that what they're, custom lines, yeah. it's the same thing. Now this is sold separately. It comes with that head yeah. and then new 37 degree die blocks as well. Yeah, new die blocks. And it works the exact same way. Yeah. Just set it, pull the handle. And another double flare. Let me see. I update. Okay. I guess that's Is that all the questions for for today. Okay. So I guess that's I guess that's it. If that's all the questions, like I said, we're gonna we're gonna pick a winner um, here in a few minutes. We'll post it. We'll contact the person. Whoever's comment or question we like the best is gonna get this own car flaring tool. Well, maybe not this one. I'll probably give you a new one. That so, one works great though. This one does work great, and Cody touched it, so it might be <laughs> you can maybe get a sell that on eBay. And um, again, you know, tell us what you want to see on these. You can keep commenting. Even if you're watching this recorded on Facebook or YouTube, you can comment on this video and tell us what you want to see. Ask a question. We'll answer the question, and we'll review your comments, and we'll try to do a video in the future you know, on rust encapsulator, how to weld, how to powder coat, whatever it is you want, to, you, know, whatever you want to see, we're going to try to do. We may even cut in while he's putting a quarter panel on partway through that process. Yeah. You know, and just let people see, you know, what's going on here inside Eastwood Garage. And don't forget to visit Eastwood.com for our daily deal, 10% off and free shipping. Yep. It's, I guess that's about it, so. We'll post when we know who's getting the giveaway. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that in a few minutes. Okay. Probably 10 minutes from now. All, All right. right. Take All right. care. Yep. Thanks for watching.